Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. So glad you're here. Well, it's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. What's going on today in the markets? Well, the Dow's down about 80. NASDAQ's down about 170. Having a little bit of a down day. Now, in the markets, the S&P, we've rallied 19% since that October low. About We're up about 19%. Now, most of that has come in the month of January. January He's had a big rally, right? Okay, now this has been what I would call a bear market rally. Now, bear market rallies happen as the market's going down. All of a sudden, you'll get this explosion higher. And basically, it crushes all the bears out of the marketplace. But then at these levels, they start to come back in again. Now, what's caused this bear market rally? Well, I wasn't really sure. But I've discovered that the corporate buybacks they're buying back their own stocks hit a record high in january 132 billion dollars in corporate buybacks where they're buying back their own stock and this just sent the market exploding higher all the people were short and all of a sudden the corporations started buying their own stock because no one else was buying them so they started buying them and this sent the market higher now the, the problem is a lot of these corporations are going to get hurt they're running out of money buying their own stock back they no longer have that money to use in their operations so when they do get the downturn they'll probably need a government bailout or something but stock buybacks have sent this market a lot higher. Now, I believe the market's still going to come a lot lower. Now, why do I believe that? Well, I believe that for a couple of reasons. The main reason that I believe that is because we've never had capitulation. You see, bear markets, they end with capitulation. They end with people they don't want to look at a stock ever again. They're afraid to open up their 401k statements because their statements are so low. They get depressed. They don't want to talk about it. They just want it to go away. Capitulation has not happened in this bear market yet. Now, I do think we're going to get capitulation on this time down, and that will be the well, the, uh, the reason that we will head up higher. But we're going to get a big drop from here. We're going to get p capitulation. I think the S&P is going to go down to around, well, 3,400, maybe 3,300 before that happens, before the people start throwing in the towel. They just want out of stocks at any cost, and that will send the market down, and you'll get that capitulation. That's not going to happen in a straight crash. You're going to get updates. Maybe we have an update on Monday. I don't no, it's possible. Maybe you get an update along the way, but there's going to be capitulation at some point. Hasn't happened yet. This bear market's not over. Once again, just my take. I'm sure your take might be completely different. That's fine, but that's my take on the market. Now, let's get over to the real estate market. Now, the real estate market, well, home builder confidence has gone up for two straight months. Now, the article as reading says, we are now have a state stable housing market because home builder confidence has gone up two straight months. Well, if we have a stable housing market, why are 57% of builders offering incentives to buy their houses, meaning that they offer either a free kitchen upgrade, they are offering a mortgage rate buy down, they're offering some type of incentive that 57% of them. Yet that number is down from 62%, which was in December. So we're dropped down to only 50% of home builders are offering incentives. Well, to me, that's not a stable market. If you have to give something away to get people to buy your house, there's more downside pressure left. Now, 31% of builders slashed their prices again in January. Now, that number is down in December 35% of home builders slashed their prices so the house prices are being slashed at a less frequent rate. All right, but once again, if they're slashing prices, do we really have stability? No, we have downward pressure on this market. Now, this is my favorite one. You see us realtors, we're trained to say things like, now's a great time to buy, or hey, buy now and you can refinance later. But here's one that really takes the cake. Okay, so this is what they're now saying. They're now telling you that, well, people are now jumping in, realizing that interest rates are not coming down. 
Now, are you jumping in to buy a house because you realize that interest rates are not coming down? You see, they say that people need houses, so they're jumping in to buy now because they realize that interest rates are not coming down. Now, I agree interest rates are not coming down on, well, on mortgages, for example. They keep going up. They were at 6.6% last week, up to 6.7%. We're going to go above 7%. We're probably going to hit 8 maybe even 9%. And there's reasons for this that I'll explain in another video. Don't really have that much time today, but the interest rates are going up. The Federal Reserve is going to have to continue to raise rates to continue this fight against inflation. They're not really fighting it very hard. They kind of want the inflation. They want to inflate away the debt. They want this inflation to stay. They could get rid of it, but they don't want to get rid of it. They are going to surrender to it. They're going to surrender. Inflation's going to win out. But rates are going to go higher. I do think that the Fed will get up to 6%, which would push mortgages around the 8 or 9% if you have a perfect spread credit score. If you have that 800 credit score, you can get a mortgage at 8% when the Fed hits that top rate at 6%. Okay, that's where I see the market going. So I do agree that interest rates are not coming down. I do not agree that people are jumping in for that reason. Now, people think that this housing market was going to rebound, right? Well, this boom in the housing market that happened during the pandemic, well, that's over. That's over. And a lot of cities, a lot of cities are going to get hurt. Okay, so here's what happened. We had the pandemic and we had this migration out of certain areas, out of like the Bay Area, out of New York, and they migrated to other areas, to cities, to like Boise, to Phoenix, Arizona. They migrated away to cheaper areas. And what did that do to the cheaper areas? Well, it pumped up the house market, right? Prices went up. Prices went up a lot. And that's just what happens. It was a migration. Well, now we're getting the reverse migration. They're coming back to the bigger cities. And well, maybe that's helping the bigger cities. But what it's really doing is hurting these areas that exploded so much higher during the pandemic. Like Phoenix, it's just it's just in a downward spiral. Uh, you go to Boise, I don't downward spiral. Las Vegas, downward spiral. Texas, downward spiral. The pressure is there because they're migrating out of those areas now back to where they came from. Okay, so there's not going to be this big explosion in the housing market. They're saying that, well, houses are going to go up because inventory's so low. Look, at inventory's not really low. Now, I will agree in 2021 and 2022, inventory was low, right? And that's what caused a big spurt up in prices of houses. But right now, we're getting a surge of inventory. A lot of areas. The inventory has already doubled over the lows of 2021 and 2022. So we don't really have that low inventory that everybody's talking about. Everybody's saying, well, the housing market can't crash because we got this low inventory. No, it can crash and inventory is not low. All right. So you got these realtors and of course they want to pressure you into this FOMO that everybody's getting in. You're going to miss out the next big boom. Look at the next big boom is not here. We have 8 million people right now, 8 million people not paying their rent. Now why? Why are they not paying their rent? Well, in a lot of states, a lot of states, they pay the rent for them. California, we have rental programs where Governor Newsom, he pays the rent for you still. I mean, it's crazy, right? I don't get this. Uh, they, they, they say it's because of the pandemic, but the pandemic to me is pretty much over. But yet a lot of people still are getting these rent subsidies. These rent, the rents being paid for, 8 million of them that they're not paying. They're not paying their rent. So there's going to be a lot of evictions coming. This is going to cause a lot of problems, right? But we got right now, we got 2 million people that are late on their mortgage payment. They're already late. Okay. And this is the good times, right? Okay. So if they're having problems, well, they could still sell their house. They have some equity in their house. And I agree. People have equity still. Most people, not all. Some are already under 
water, but they could sell their house and get out if they're having problems making their mortgage payment. Well, we got 2 million people right now that are already over 90 days late on their mortgage. Okay, that's that's pretty wild because it's going to get worse. There's going to be this thing called the recession. Now, people will say we're not in a recession. We're just going to have a lot of layoffs. There's a lot of layoffs coming. There's about 200,000 layoffs a month happening you every day you get these companies they come out and they say there's going to be you know 10,000 people laid off here 20,000 there 5,000 there and these are just the big ones you don't hear about the little businesses that are having to lay people off the businesses that have 50 or 100 people working and some of those businesses are going to go completely out of business and all 50 or 100 people will be out of work but they're laying people off too they're cutting their workforce by 10 20 30 percent so you're going to get another two million people this year this year 2023 we're just starting out we're in the month of february now it's just getting started the fun's getting started i mean sit back get some popcorn out watch the show but this is what's happening right they're getting laid off there's going to be about two million of them laid off now out of those two million you know a lot of them are going to be homeowners and they're not going to be able to pay their mortgages because they have nothing saved up most americans don't have anything saved up something like 60 three percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck I mean that's pretty wild right so when that you lose your job and you don't get that paycheck well what's got to happen well your mortgage isn't going to get paid so with some people are just going to put the house on the market and that's going to add to that surge in inventory right so the inventory is already surged it's already doubled off of the 2021 2022 lows were already double but we could double again from here very easily with the two million people being laid off being laid off from you know their jobs they're not going to have a paycheck anymore and they live paycheck to paycheck so the mortgage doesn't get paid well what happens when the mortgage all right so the banks might have to take these houses back in foreclosure you see some people are already underwater and as the equity starts to go down because prices will go down take my word well you don't have to take my word for that but that's my opinion my opinion is that the prices will continue to go down and when you get these layoffs it's going to bring in the for sellers, the people that have to sell, the foreclosures, they're going to be dumping them back onto the marketplace. The banks are preparing for this. They're contacting brokers like myself to get ready for the foreclosure process that we saw back in 2007, 2008, where all these bank-owned properties came onto the marketplace. And it's weird, you know, it's weird. You go, well, who owns the property? Oh, it's the bank. Oh, okay. Well, we were buying them directly, you know, I mean, from the agent, but the owner was the banks and there were a lot of them and you can get some really good deals i do think the opportunities are coming i do think that there's going to be some really good deals now i would sit 2023 out i'd wait till 2024 because this is taking longer to play out i'll admit it's taking longer to play out than i thought and they can probably extend it a little bit longer they're going to print well probably trillions and trillions of dollars they're going to be buying mortgages up you see they say they're doing this quantitative tightening I don't really see it. I don't see him selling these mortgage-backed securities that they own. I don't really sell, see him selling the bonds that they own. They say they are, but it's not coming off their books very fast. So they're not doing a lot of that. But anyways, that's going to cause the forced selling onto the marketplace. Inventory is going to surge. Prices are going to go down. Don't let these realtors tell you about this FOMO fear of getting in. Everybody's getting in right now. Everybody's jumping in because they realize interest rates aren't coming down. I do agree with them. Interest rates are not coming down, but everybody is not jumping in. If you're smart, you're running, you're selling as fast as you can, and you're taking cover you're waiting for the opportunity to happen once again i'm tall mike if you like this stuff give me the thumbs up why not hit that subscribe button because there's some exciting stuff coming next week i want to talk to you about all right get out there everybody have a great weekend we'll talk next week bye bye now